Mm, nailed it. All right, everyone. I was going to say welcome back to the movie podcast show, but you never saw the first week's episode. <laughs> so let's just call this one the first one. Um, but um, I don't know what you're talking about. We never had. Yeah, no. We didn't record a full like 40 minute discussion. Um, anyway, um, this is going to be a show that we do here at Utopian Peanuts where we're going to do both movies and shows. So the name is probably going to change by the week. Um, but this week we are going to talk about the new Netflix show, Altered Carbon. Altered Carbon. I'm bad at doing synopsises. Synopsis. Synopsis. Um, so I'm just going to let IMDb do that work for me and let's see what they have to say about oh, it's what it's 8.5 on IMDb. Set in a future where consciousness is digitalized and stored, a prisoner returns to life in a new body and must solve a mind-bending murder to win his freedom. Oh, I'm spoiled. The show's spoiled for I me. Mean, I can't. I, I think that does a pretty good job. I yeah, mean, it's uh, yeah. the most bare-bones description that you could go woo, for. Right if, to the point. Wow. Um, but, um, so let's just talk about like what we thought about it and then we can go into details of the show. Um, first of all, I loved it. It's <laughs> probably in the top five of my favorite shows on Netflix, maybe even the top five of my favorite shows of all time. It's very, wow. yeah, no, it's good. I, I loved it. Yeah. Um, uh, obviously it's very gritty. It's very dirty. And also, it gets so many bonus points because Edgar Allan Poe, they had Poe. <laughs> that that just gives so many bonus points for me. But You pretentious uh, dick. I, you can't use Edgar Allan Poe as no. pretentious. Okay? If you don't I mean, mean, you can, but, but I won't hold it against you. Who doesn't know who he is? Who no. doesn't know who he is? Um, but anyway, um, I just, I like that dystopian future. Anything dystopian future. And I think they just did a really good job at it. I also loved the whole stack concept is pretty much that you could pretty much have any body that you wanted and your entire consciousness um, was, I mean, I'm just reading the synopsis again. Your entire consciousness was based in this hard drive that you store in your neck. That's more like a flash drive, I'd say. Okay. Well, 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 a storage device. (laughs) (laughs) And pretty much, you know, and I like how, um, they did the class system. I mm. like. Um, oh, I forget his name. Who's Who's the Asian dude with the with the? Uh, um, the Lou Leo. Uh, Lung. 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 Okay, I like Lung. Towards the end of the show, he was talking about how um, you know the, the the wealthy people are pretty much gods, and you know he his big thing throughout the show was religion, and he was like. You know, they are gods because, you know, they live forever because they can afford to get as many bodies as they want um, and they can clone themselves and back up themselves and all that. So they're pretty much immortal. And, and because oh, I was going to say they're, they're if, if they, they like, like you enough, enough they, they have, have enough wealth to pretty much get you whatever you want. So you can pray and yeah. they will answer you on like religious god kind of like that fight night scene where um that husband and wife are going to beat each other and he was like whoever wins they'll just buy you a new body yeah yeah and then at the end he was just like i'm just gonna get both of you new bodies Um, oh that's only because because he said so yeah um but no i just i really like that concept of course it's not new most um, dystopian future movies, TV shows, they kind of have that class system because I think that is dystopian future. Um, Children of Man had that. Um, a bunch of others. I mean, Blade Runner had it. Um, I think that's a very common theme in dystopian future movies, but I think the show just did it well. Um, but no, what, what were your original thoughts my original thoughts like um, when you first saw it when, when i first saw it, it i was like holy shit this is scratching all of my sci-fi man itches. you were scratching itches we've had two shows now i know talk about scratching itches it's, it's, a, it's an easy analogy <laughs> easy metaphor <laughs> um it hit all the points that i like wanted to see because hard sci-fi shows are hard to come by now that aren't or that are uh, like top notch production quality. Mm-hmm. Like some of the shows on sci fi, like the channel, mm-hmm. sure had some sci fi elements to them, but 
uh, to knock on the sci-fi channel. You still love it. The production quality was mediocre. Yeah, and I, I get it. I get it. I do. But I, I wanted something a little over the top, something on the Blade Runner level of production quality. Mm-hmm. And it hit every major point almost too well. Mm-hmm. Uh, like the first episode, it was all very predictable as to where he was going to go. But it hit it so well that I just didn't care and I didn't want to stop like it hit all the tropes but it didn't bother me whatsoever yeah no and it did after the first episode it took some turns and I was like all right this is intriguing to me especially uh, that, was, that was my first initial especially thought especially Poe I'm gonna go on about he great comic relief there wasn't that much comic relief in this show no, because it's very, very it was dark very show. dark but he just came in at the right times and mm-hmm. just just that tension just went down every time he was in a scene that and um another thing to add was unlike the movie that we we reviewed in the episode that shall not be named what happened? Uh, oh in the uh, Huh, I forgot all of a sudden. But the dialogue was actually pretty good. Um, I mean, there are some iffy parts here and there, are some lines that weren't great, but the writers had actually talked to human beings and mm-hmm. kind of had a grasp of what a, or how a, a human conversation re- yeah, and, and how uh, humans react emotionally. Mm-hmm. Again, there are some iffy parts, but it's, it's really hard to do that kind of stuff as well as push the story forward. Um, so I thought that was interesting, or not interesting, but a, a good point. A plus, if you will. Yeah, no. That the dialogue wasn't like crammed so much with sci fi cliche words and uh, gibberish mm-hmm. that it's like, ooh, mm-mm, this is bad. Um, but enough of it. it. It didn't assume that you're an idiot either. No, that's what I'm trying to say. No, and that's what I like because there were, there were several times where I was kind of confused like what was happening or where it was going. And I think so many shows nowadays, they don't want the viewer to feel that way. Mm -hmm. They just want to hand the story on a silver platter. Yeah. Easy consumption. And it was kind of nice, like sitting there for a little bit and like, I'm not really sure what's happening right now. But I I knew that they were going to present it to me eventually because it did every Everything at the end of the show got wrapped up. Most of the stuff that you had questions about got wrapped up at the end. It might have taken a while, but there was no like lingering questions. Mm-hmm. No. They, they even set it up well enough where season two is going to be predictable, like where they're going to go with that. Um, and I know me and you, me and you disagree whether yep. there should be yep. a season two. I, it's not that I disagree with you that there shouldn't be a season two. I'm just saying that Netflix has probably seen how well this did. Oh yeah, and it's no. going to force a season two. Whether but that's not my argument. You know, no, I, I get your I argument is that I don't care whether they're going to make it happen. Mm-hmm. It just shouldn't happen. Yeah. But I, I mean, it, it could still go because this universe is huge. That's true. It, they could do a lot within the universe it, it, without it, touching on Kovach or um, no. Kel, Kel, rather. No, I mean, they, they could just live with inside this universe and go different routes. I don't think they are. I think, no. like, spoiler, if you watch last episode, I'm pretty sure season two is going to be him trying to find Kel. Yeah. The, the leader of. Um, Envoys, not the envoys. Thank you. Um, I so I'm a hundred percent sure that's the route they're taking. Um, if that happens, although I'm pretty sure it is. Um, Twenty bucks says that Riker gets killed within like the first episode of season two, and he and Ortega, Kovach and Ortega, team up or something. Yeah, no, because they're bringing her back too. They have to. Yeah, it's like Scully and Mulder, not Scully. Do you think Poe's yeah, gonna come back? Spoiler: Poe dies. Um, do you think? Um, Poe. I don't think so. He was reduced to nano dust. Yeah, that was talk about a scene that just ripped your heart out. Was that just me? I got like really like emotional. Like uh, that's something else I really liked about this show is I normally don't give a shit about half the characters in TV because they're not fleshed out well enough, or the dialogue is just so iffy. Unless it's mm-hmm. Criminal Minds, that show is immaculate, except for when um, Gideon leaves. I don't different different can of worms. Mm-hmm. Um, but I actually cared a good bit 
for these characters. And when Poe went down, oh, it was, it was it was full of drama. Um, and then when he ended it with that um, actual Edgar Allan quote, Poe, yeah, Poe, the Poe, the Poe. The, the That's, That's what, what they, they call, call it. it. <laughs> A quote. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, when he quoted Poe, yeah. I don't know the poem, but yeah, that was cool. But um, would, would it surprise it you that a well-known top critic would disagree with you about how well-developed the characters were? No, not at all. Because I mean, I get where they're coming from, but I highly, I definitely disagree. Ben Travers from IndieWire says, Alter Carbon... Way to dox him. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, call him out. Like, he's going to watch this. At uh, IndieWire says, Alter Carbon is a hollow shell of a series, and... Hollow shells of people. About, about hollow shells of people. About yeah. hollow shells of people. Only well, we got one part, right? What, the hollow? No, no the, the shell, shell, hollow shells of people. Oh. They, they are, are hollow shells, shells but they, they themselves themself aren't. Like, like the, the, the sleeves oh, themselves are oh, hollow. I was wondering where you were going with that. No, no, oh, okay. no. Okay. Okay. I was wondering where you were going with that. But. I mean, you, I, guess I guess you can make that argument, argument because, of course, it's just another detective story and you had the love i wouldn't really call it a love triangle no there wasn't a triangle between ortega and um kovach Kovach. and um you just said it. i'm so bad with names yeah no i or Riker or miriam the the leader of the um oh kel yeah kel that's that's not a triangle well it it was but he had two love interests he fell he was in love with one and then he fell in love with the other and you could see that there could be conflict there. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't say that he was still in love with Kel at the beginning. I mean, he, 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 he was, but I wouldn't necessarily say it was the same. It was like he idolized her. Oh, okay. So it wasn't like a carnal love, so to speak. I don't know, it's... But what I was going at, no, yeah, it's, it's I get, very, I get what it was a very stereotypical story. You had a main character who had a love interest, possibly two love interests. It was a detective story. And then Ortega and him like hated each other at the beginning, but then grew to love each other. That That's very stereotypical. But yeah, again, for the, a hot sex scene, though. Yeah. Spoiler. These, these are all arguments. I mean, I don't necessarily agree with them, but to go off some of the critics' reviews, you can see this as just being a hollow story because all this stuff has been done before. But everything's been done before. Yeah, nothing's original anymore. Yeah, there's, there's like six original stories, and everyone just feeds off them. Um, so that argument that, oh, because this is so stereotypical, it can't be good, is false because, yes – a lot of this stuff was stereotypical, but it was done in such a way that just was fantastic. This is my favorite review, though, is um, someone from the Sunday Times in the UK said, this is straight up nonsense. Just very straight to the point. Yeah, I, I respect that review. Mm-hmm. I love ambiguous reviews that give you no reason well, there why there's a full review. We, we could it's go, okay. We could go deep into what she thought was straight up nonsense. I don't nonsense. care enough yeah, about no, it. I don't either. But no, go. We I mentioned critics. This, as far as the general public goes, this has gone pretty rave reviews. Right now, has a ninety-one on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, as far as regular viewers go, but it's at sixty percent. As far as critics go, this has not sat well with critics. Um, a lot of things don't. No, um, one of the main complaints um, was whitewashing. How Kovach Bullshit. was a white guy. <clears throat> Sorry. But my argument is they had his Asian counterpart in there. Yeah, yeah, it's not as if they also didn't include a shit ton of Asian characters in their show. Yeah, that would be different if both were white. Then yeah. I'd be like, okay, maybe, but... And it's contextualized. It's not like he had the superior option of being a white dude. Yeah, and, and this whole storyline is, is that sometimes your stack was just put into whatever body... Yeah. Was so you had women and men, you had men and women. It definitely made a point of you get what you get and you kind of have to deal right. with it. Especially in the poor. The poor were yeah. pretty much yeah. just put into whatever was available. And then sure there was a, a grand design behind him having Riker's body. Did they go into that? I thought they went into that. Like They, why, they kind of did. Why just, they chose his body. Well, it was because, spoiler, again, um, Riker and Ortega had 
dirt on, on the whole that's thing. Right. That's yeah. right. And so mm-hmm. um, I forget the dude's name right now. The I'll put up a post. You just no. Look up the character list. Uh, Lawrence, Lawrence Bancroft. Bancroft. Okay. Um, he was just trying to ruin or take his life from the inside out, and so he knew that, or even possibly Kovac's sister Ray knew that have, or him having Riker's body would fuck with her to no end. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's even if there was a grand design behind that, it's still. I don't know. I think that argument is completely moot. I think it's a, it's a, a shit an easy point to shit on the show and i I don't think it has anything behind it and that's always my problem with film critics is i feel like they just pick it apart where it doesn't need to be picked apart yeah no like you can find that argument if you want to find that argument like Mm -hmm. you can claim whitewashing and you can because he was asian but his new body wasn't asian fine but in the story in the world that was completely explained And and it's not as if he was trying, if he was adhering to Asian culture, but in a white body. So there was no like appropriation at all. There's no inappropriate um, adhering or attempting to adhere to culture norms or anything like that. They didn't try to say like, they didn't shove you in, shove you, shove it in your face that he was an Asian in a white dude's body. Mm. Also didn't help. His last name is Kovac. He's a Japanese Slavic Mm-hmm. Mash up. mix, yeah. I, I don't. Uh, and then even his sister was Asian. She's straight Japanese. Yeah, well, Japanese technically yeah. Japanese. Which, which, which it, Slavic, yeah, it also but. explains like his dad was white and his mom was Asian. So, mm-hmm. theory, in theory, he's uh, anyway. Uh, it's stupid, but it's, it's a stupid argument. I I I do agree that there is some whitewashing in Hollywood. Um, just take like Prince of Persia, where he had Jake Gyllenhaal. But then you had um, Gods of Egypt, where you had, um, I just said his name, Gerard Butler, play an Egyptian. I mean, I I do agree that a lot of roles go to white people that shouldn't probably go to white people, but I I just think it's abused. Like, whatever. We we, we can move on. One of my... uh my favorite things about it was that it wasn't necessarily all action. Like there were some there was some slow hefty exposition. Hefty yeah, there's a, there's a lot of story progression. Action mm-hmm. wasn't. While some of it was gratuitous and badass as shit, mm-hmm. there really wasn't superfluous action. Like people weren't just killed for no reason. Besides the people that were killed, you know, like they weren't important as in like that. But. Almost, Almost every time, time someone was killed, killed, it progressed the plot to some, some degree. degree. Like, like after he was, he was interrogated, interrogated, he didn't need to kill all those people, but he was so filled with rage and pain from oh, having to go through that for who knows how long. That he thought, concept. He, he thought he was in there for days. That he thought, concept he, terrified me. Yeah, it's terrifying. But uh, he, again, he thought he was in there for days. He had no clue. So he released it out on everyone there, which again, that was gratuitous. It was, but what other way? I don't know. What so what would you I give it, Strad? I give it four lungs weird stack grabbers out of five. That's good. That's good. Um, and I will also give it four. Replicants. Replicants. God damn it. All right. Um, thanks for tuning in to our first our first um movie tv review thing um we have links for you in the description we wouldn't mind if you gave those a click follow us on social media um subscribe to the channel like this video comment um we love advice from people so please comment we haven't gotten any comments yet i would like comments I need some constructive criticism I really so we can do. have people to yell at. I really do. Um, but thank you guys once again, and we will see you next time.